Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths! Where we're once again playing with cram cannons and having fun with cram cannons because by gum I'm a cram gunner and I can't help it. And so today what I want to kind of, I guess, discuss and play with and um, mess around with is something that is kind of, I'm not sure that this is really a thing that gets used much, but it's a compromise between a standard cram cannon and a cram mortar, and it's something I call a flat cram. Because it is essentially a cram turret that is so flat uh, that other crams can fire over it, provided you turn down their muzzle velocity uh, so that they can arc their shell over their body. So, what we have here is a battery of flat crams. They're quite tall because I, uh, I just, I don't know, they're just... just to make them, I guess, to have maximum cram in minimum space that conveniently is height, I don't know. Uh, so I first started messing around with these somewhat recently when I was planning the Titan Slung and thinking what kind of secondary weapons um, I could stick on it. For those of you who don't know, the Titan Slung is a giant battleship that I made a whole series about designing. It's called Battleship Diary. Do give that a watch, it's great fun. Uh, but yeah, so the problem that I have as someone who is not only a cram addict but a canoe addict is that you get a lot of unused space that you could fill up with all kinds of stuff except it's not particularly well protected so it's best not to stick things like uh, engines or lambs or anything like that in there. But you, you just you need, you need more ducker, you need to fill it in with uh, something and so... Uh, missiles is the obvious choice, but I'm trying to avoid using missiles as much as possible uh, because they tend to inflate the cost of craft a lot and, you know, they're, you know, I don't know, they f it feels too easy to use missiles. Like, I know, that's dumb, this game's complicated enough, no need to make it harder. And cram mortars is one option, but they're very, very specialized and they just do not work well against... Probably the vast majority of targets that you have, uh, if you're, say, playing through the Nita campaign, or even if you're in a tournament with a strict rule set, uh, mortars, like, are only good in rule sets that um, only allow for big and slow targets. So, what to do, what to do. So, here's a compromise. So, all these crams, like I said, uh, their muzzle velocity is set to only about 125 meters per second. Between 120 and 150 seems to be uh, the good compromise uh, for this. And so, uh, they can arc over each other. And in order to enable them to arc over each other, uh, with minimum risk of them shooting each other, uh, this uh, one meter tall slice is all that's poking above the deck. So. You've got the cram firing piece here, barrel sticking out, a little ring of metal just for protection from uh, the sides, and a little bit of applique just so it doesn't look really stupid, just being a cube turning around. And of course you can cover this with decoration and mimics and so forth. So, this is a calculated risk, because as I'm fond of saying, even though I don't say it nearly often enough, there's two ways, broad ways to go with a turret cap. One is to make it big and very, very tough. Uh, which is often what I usually do, or it's make it small and hard to hit. And uh, from the front, uh, this thing is only one meter tall, so anything coming directly from the front on this turret has only a very narrow margin to hit it. In fact, a lot of um, just even experimenting with turrets that I usually make, which are only between three to four uh, meters tall, a lot of things just kind of whiff over the top of them, which is one of the reasons they survive decently well. Uh, this is the extreme version of that, of course. If anything comes along the top, and so in particular things like, well, cram cannons, cram mortars, uh, low velocity APS, or anything dropped from above, uh, and missiles, uh, they're going to take out the firing piece immediately, which is why this is almost definitely not something you want to do for your main weapons. This is secondary stuff. This is, you've built a big canoe, uh, or whatever, and uh, you've got some space to fill and you want some reasonably cheap uh, firepower just to deal with uh, big slow targets, but you want them a little bit more reliable than mortars. So just to give you an idea how cheap these things are, uh, let's go here, so place all the two. 
they're just over 3,000 materials each. So that's everything. That's the firing piece, the barrels, the armor, and the cram components. Also, 3D Tetris, very helpful for cutting the cost down. And so that's probably enough of me talking. Let's show you what I mean uh, when chucking these things at something. So we're going to spawn in a plunderer like so. And bear in mind, these shells have lousy health. So the health of one of these shells, these are... Uh, these are actually pen depth shells. They've got just enough uh, damage to, I think, maybe heavily damage a one metal beam without anything stacked behind it. But that's okay, because there's 18 of them. And uh, they actually fire quite quickly. Much faster than you usually would for a cram, but this is cram spam. So they go kablooey. That probably was really loud and much louder than it should have been. Sorry about that. And so this is probably almost certainly going to miss, but land a lot closer than cram mortars usually do. Usually cram mortars take two or three volleys in order to get their iron, whereas uh, second volley here, okay, we've, uh, we have um, immediately blown up... Uh, what the hell is that thing called again? Not Azipod. Outrigger? I guess Outrigger is the right term. So... This site will be very familiar to people who've played From the Depths for a while, because 150 meters per second is the old speed for a cram cannon with a flash suppressor on it, so... You can still hit things. You can still hit, like, you know, anything. 30 meters, 30, 40 meters per second is about the speed limit of what uh, this speed of shell can comfortably shoot at. And uh, the crossbones is actually gonna... not crossbones, the plunderer is actually gonna collide with us. And uh, just if you're spamming pen depth shells, uh, they're gonna hurt. Admittedly, uh, the plunderer is not the best armored thing, so by gum we probably need to show you a better armored thing. Actually, if you took the... Uh, I'm, just, I'm just gonna call the outriggers... Uh, well, okay, it's dead. That's nice. Uh, let's try that again with something a little bit uh, bigger and meaner. Let's try it against... Can this thing get through? I don't remember if it can get through an Alcazar, but I'm pretty sure this can get through an Iron Cord, no problem. Fun, fun fact, Alcazar has stronger lambs than the Iron Cord. So much for Godly. So yeah, these things are very much secondary weapon type. It's just, it's artillery support. And, um... So, yeah, so uh, ideally in this situation you'd have some kind of main gun uh, that's, uh well, kind of shredding, and this is just extra damage for funsies, if nothing else. And one of the great things about this, you can just set these things to be pure kinetic and set them to either uh, regular piercing or hollow point, and they just kind of soak up and drain an enemy lambs. And we are going to miss horribly... Yep. Question is, can mortars do better than this? I do think that the slightly flatted trajectory does give flat crams an advantage. Because remember, the only reason the muzzle velocity is dialed down is so that they can fire over the top of each other like this. And you can imagine you can put a third row of these things down. And redundancy is very nice. One of the things I'm constantly being reminded of is that uh, if something isn't working from the depths, one possibility is that you're just not using enough of it. So yeah, there is that. And of course, uh, the question of course is, can you make these things bigger? And if you make them bigger, what do you need to change to keep them nice and effective? Well, I'm glad you asked because uh, there is another platform I've made uh, with flat crams on it. And this is bigger ones. So, this is about as big as I feel flat crams uh, should sensibly get. They're not super big, so these are... what are these? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven by seven meter turrets. Ignore the round shape. I just do that because I like doing it. And they are 2,000 millimeter uh, airburst fragment uh, crams. So shell speed of 150 meters per second, so slightly faster. And their job is basically to spam fragments at stuff. And weirdly enough, uh, one huge advantage that this kind of setup is, is just a great big, just pure frag cram cannon uh, with a timed fuse uh, with 180 degree frag, is that it's weirdly, like, it's certainly a lot better against, um, 
against erratic targets than Mortars ever could be. So we do this and we'll see. Probably not going to get the Flying Squirrel on the first volley or even the second or maybe I'll be... Never mind. <laughs> we hit it dead on. Deacon's Hell. Actually, no, we didn't. So... There you go. Mortars could never do that. That's one advantage of uh, these things uh, that they have over mortars is that you can still spam them in much the same way you can uh, do with mortars, uh, but uh, they're slightly better against erratic targets because they can aim straight at them. So let's spawn in uh, the Iron Cordon again as a kind of a crash test dummy. These things do have their limits. I've been mucking around. They're, they do suck at long range. Um, but less so than mortars, which is nice. And if that looked like a problem, bear in mind that the uh, Iron Cordon has only so much juice that it holds in its lamb system, and we just ate a lot of it. So, again, you can just make these things pure kinetic, pure hollow point, or something like that, and just have them drain uh, the lambs, because it's a cheap way of just messing with uh, enemy active defenses. Um, Staggered Fire is probably a decent idea with these things, uh, simply because I've been testing it against things that have missile interceptors and sea whiz, and um, if you have them all in a volley like this, they do get just deleted uh, by sea whiz, which is unfortunate. And any moment now, we're going to see what this thing usually does to the Iron Cordon, which is not the best crash test dummy, or target dummy, I should say. Uh, because it actually has kind of terrible armor all around. Come on, land big shots. You know you want to. There we go. There we go. There's some block confetti. So yeah, these um, are still small enough that you can fit them quite comfortably in the bowel stern of something that you can't, that you'll run out of ideas for what to stick in. And against anything that's uh, not too fast. They can still hurt. Like, look at this. These aren't pen depth, and they're kind of making a mess of things. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the idea. Flat crams. I do, I am going to test, and this is kind of a sequel hook. Uh, I am going to make a test dummy uh, ship armed with, or I'm going to make two of them uh, pretty much identical, except uh, one will be armed with these flat crams, and the other will be armed with regular mortars, just to see which one kind of does better, uh, because I am very curious to see. I am guessing the flat cramps will do better, except that mortars are actually kind of a hard counter to this, assuming uh, they can hit them, so... Yeah, that is a thing. Let, let's keep shooting something, because shooting things is fun. Uh, what can we shoot at? Something that doesn't have too much active defenses. Uh, let's shoot at the... I wonder if the... I'm... This, there's a risk of embarrassment right here. Um, let's shoot at the Excalibur. The Excalibur doesn't have too much land and stuff, does it? I need to dial the volume down, I think. I'm looking at my audio readout and it's like, whoa! That's actually a lot. Uh, let's see, do you have Sea Wiz? You do! Not quite enough, though. Also, those fragments tickled your bum. Oh, dear. Uh, okay, the Excalibur is also shooting itself, so that's uh, not a point in its favor. Also, that ma- th This is why some people just want to play from the depths. Just, like, look at this. It's 16 500mm guns. Never mind that it's not the most effective thing in the world, because of lambs. But, it's so fun! That didn't do as much of a thought it would. But anyway, uh, that's basically it for flat crams. Let me know what thoughts you have, if you've got any better ideas for this kind of deacon's hell. I forgot how loud that was. Sorry. Sorry for your eardrums. In fact, let me just... Let me just... Let me just... Oh, damn it, I can't do... <laughs> it's already really low. Anyway, let's... Hold on, let's see. One more volley. One more volley for daddy. One more volley for daddy. This is actually kind of nostalgic to seeing crams uh, aiming upward like this. And just arcing their shots like that. Sorry, the crams are really loud. The crams are really loud. Whee! 
you have missed. Well, Daddy's disappointed. And that is because we are a long way away. But anyway, that's about it for flat crams. I'm rambling now, so let me know what you think. Let me know if this is the best idea you've ever seen, or the stupidest idea you've ever seen. And I wonder if mortars would do better at this range. Interesting to think. My guess is both are doing equally badly. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for- oh my goodness. No, that missed. There's fun perks in it for you. I interrupted my own spiel, I was distracted by crams. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.